Hello, and welcome to Green Dragon, a monthly show where we talk about green initiatives in Maryland and Howard County, ongoing sustainability efforts at Howard Community College, and ideas and ways for you to be more sustainable at home. I'm Bob Marietta, HCC's Environmental Health and Safety Supervisor, and I thank you for watching today. My guest today is Kim Peza, who chairs both Howard County's Sustainability Board and the Columbia Association's Climate Change and Sustainability Advisory Committee. She recently began the position of Climate Resilience Director with the Office of the Comptroller of Maryland. Any other responsibilities to add to that, Kim? <laughs> hey, Bob, thanks so much for having me on the show. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Um, yeah, there's a few others. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm also a board member of the Howard County Sierra Club. I'm a publicly elected member of the Howard County Democratic Central Committee. Um, for fun, I'm a trumpet player in two musical ensembles, the Columbia Concert Band and the Patuxent Jazz Band. And I was actually on their board for 10 years and president for five. Uh, but certainly, uh, last but not least, um, I'm, a, I'm a mother, and uh, my son is a dual enrollment student at Howard County Community College. Go Dragons! And he also uh, plays trumpet and is a hurdler on his high school varsity track and field team. So, yeah, I guess I like to keep busy. Okay, <laughs> I'll say. So, Kim, tell us a little bit about the educational career path you took to wind up in these positions. Sure. Well, my story goes all the way back to the ripe old age of eight when I was just really enjoying learning science, but I was hearing the news about the hole in the ozone layer, deforestation, and other environmental pollution that humans had caused. And that was it. At eight, I decided I'm going to dedicate my life to protecting and preserving this special planet that we all live on. So I went to school, uh, got my Bachelor's of Science in Environmental Science at the University of Maryland, go Terps. Uh, I did a few environmental internships. I've done some contracting for federal government, working on environmental compliance with the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act. Um, I did a few years with a small environmental nonprofit. And then um, before I took my current job, I spent uh, several years with the climate change program at the Maryland Department of the Environment where I helped coordinate um, and lead the writing of our state's climate plans. Wow. So tell me a little bit more about this new job as Climate Resilience Director for the Office of the Comptroller. Yeah, it's amazing so far. Um, I just really appreciate the foresight Comptroller Lehrman had to bring a Climate Resilience Director to the Office of the Comptroller. It's a first in the state, and honestly, not many other states have it. Um, so there I serve as the subject matter expert on climate change, resiliency, environmental sustainability. Um, currently I'm drafting a project proposal to incorporate climate change, sustainability, and environmental justice in the work of the Board of Public Works, which is comprised of the governor, the treasurer, and the comptroller. They basically approve or disapprove um, just about every expenditure of state spending. So um, it's a pretty important role that she has. I also am gonna help the State Retirement and Pension Board to consider climate risk as financial risk in their investments. I'll be a liaison on several environmental and climate boards and lead policy research and uh, legislative and regulatory review relating to climate for the office. And um, it's just really, it's a really exciting time. Our governor actually just named a chief sustainability officer and a chief resilience officer. So Maryland is really leading the way in having climate change experts at the highest levels of state government. It's, it's pretty obvious that you're the right person to be in that position right now. We're, we're glad you, you're there. Okay. So, so why did Howard County, Maryland become your home? Well, I, I was actually born and raised in the suburbs of Boston, um, but I came to Maryland for college because I wanted to be near all the sort of environmental nonprofits that are headquartered in the DC area. The EPA is here, you know, so I just thought I need to be in the DC metro area to, to get a good environmental job. And um, I settled in Howard County. I just loved it. It's a nice central location. Um, and yeah, I just love it here. 
So who or what is, is the Howard County Environmental Sustainability Board? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm, yeah, I'm guessing the average resident of Howard County doesn't know, um, but it was, uh, it's a board, um, we also call it just sometimes the ESB, Environmental Sustainability Board. It was formed in 2007 under then County Executive Ken Ullman, and it has 13 members. Uh, the board assists in implementation of the county's environmental agenda. Uh, we provide advice and review. The members include experts in energy, air, water quality, environmental governance, community outreach, education, transit, green buildings, and environmental health. Wow. So how did you get involved in this Howard County group? And can anybody attend these meetings? Yeah, these are open to the public. Um, I actually attended some of their first early meetings back in 2007 um, and then kind of made my way back about well, eight years ago or so just as a resident of Howard County. I just wanted to know what was going on and uh, ended up uh, getting recommended and approved by the county council to join the board last year. And then I served as vice chair for a year and um, was honored and humbled to have been chosen as chair for this this coming year. Um, but yeah, the meetings are open and you can find links on Howard County's uh, webpage if you just search Environmental Sustainability Board. So what's the relationship for this board with the County Office of Community Sustainability? Okay, well, so first, I think we should tell your listeners about the Office of Community Sustainability. Originally, named the Environmental Sustainability Office. Um, it addresses all environmental issues for Howard County, uh, which enhances the quality of life for our residents while protecting the environment. It's uh, headed up by Administrator Tim Latimer, who's an outstanding Howard County community member with a long career in the US State Department and his work includes decades of environmental sustainability and climate change. So the office works on water quality, stormwater, agriculture, energy, and climate. Um, and actually they just recently released an updated and very ambitious climate plan. Uh, it's a climate action and resilience plan and it's called Climate Forward. And um, one of the great things in there is the goal to reduce um, Howard County's greenhouse gases by 60% by 2030 and net zero by 2045. So in addition to that, they also are addressing resilience against the increase in extreme weather that now occurs due to human caused climate change. Um, they also have an incredible new dashboard. So I think we'll get a link in here somewhere for you all to check it out, but it's like climateforward.howardcountymd.gov. So now another one, <laughs> what is the Columbia Association Climate Change and Sustainability Advisory Committee? Yes, okay, so that one, uh, also I'm sure people haven't heard of, but it's a, a Columbia Association specific advisory committee. Um, it's also a group of professional, environmental professionals, experts, or people with experience in sustainability, environment, and climate change. And um, we help to advise CA and CA's sustainability staff, like uh, Jeremy Scharfenberg, who's the director of community operations, which, and he leads several divisions, including sustainability. Um, for instance, one of the things we accomplished was about over a year ago, we helped get a climate vulnerability assessment done for CA, and that uses data and climate pr predictions to identify assets and other community features that may be vulnerable uh, to expected changes in our climate. So Columbia Association can use this report to develop mitigation strategies for making the most at-risk uh, assets more resilient to climate change. And you can learn more at columbiaassociation.org and then just search for sustainability initiatives. Wow. <laughs> You are one busy lady, <laughs> and we're glad you're there. So what, what are the most important messages about climate change we can share with our listeners today? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> um, 
You know, I think I'd like to start with a favorite quote of mine from um, former President Barack Obama. But we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. So basically, we can't put this off for later or let future generations fix this. It'll be too late. Um, you know, the main thing to understand is that there's a complete scientific consensus on the fact that human activities like burning fossil fuels <laughs> releases climate polluting gases that are causing the planet to dangerously overheat. There's also other land use activities like deforestation, some agricultural practices like animal agriculture um, that are also contributing to climate change. So it sounds like we know what we need to do. Like we've done it, we haven't done the right things in the past. And so we need to change the way we're doing things. Right, exactly. Yeah, we can and we are, we are changing. I mean, renewable energy is increasing by leaps and bounds. Our governments are taking actions to limit warming. Um, every fraction of a degree, we can keep the planet from rising. will make a dramatic difference in our climate. So you've probably heard um, that we need to keep the worldwide global average temperature from rising more than 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. And that probably doesn't mean much to most people. Uh, first of all, here in the US, we use Fahrenheit. So uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius is roughly three degrees Fahrenheit uh, in this framing. And it, and even that doesn't probably sound too bad to most people, but it's not that like our local temperatures are gonna rise three degrees. It's that the entire planet's atmospheric system will rise three degrees which causes drastic local temperature changes and extreme unpredictable weather across the planet. So in Maryland, we will experience more like 95 plus degree days than we've ever had in the past. But the Middle East will experience more 120, 130 degree days more often. Um, so it's not going to be like equal around the whole planet. Depends on where you live, how it will affect you. But basically, it's not that we're all going to get a little warmer. It's that the whole planet is going to have a different climate than humans have ever experienced before. And we know that's not going to be safe for us. So what is the impact of climate change? What does it cost our economy and how are individual people going to be affected? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a loaded set of questions. Um, I think the simplest answer is that Human-induced acceleration of climate change will not only affect every single person on the planet, but every single living organism, every animal, insect, and plant. Um, it'll also affect our Earth systems, of course, our atmosphere, the air we breathe, our hydrosphere, the water we drink, our oceans, and our cryosphere, right, the Earth's ice and snow. It touches nearly every single thing, creature, and system on Earth. <laughs> Um, the economic cost is more than just a dollar amount, but right now estimates of unchecked climate change are nearly $200 trillion between now and 2070. The UN has reported that in the last 50 years, extreme weather worsened by climate change has caused 2 million deaths and $4 trillion. So these are big numbers. They're a little hard to even imagine, but, um, the cost, let's, let's like bring it down to the cost to you, right, and your family. Um, what you might notice is maybe higher prices for items like food due to heat, droughts, and floods that reduced reduce harvests, right? I don't know if you noticed, but I did a few weeks ago or a month ago. I couldn't find blueberries. And it's because the extreme temperatures where those are grown this time of year caused some crops to fail, right? So it'll impact our food supply as well. Um, other things that may cost you personally is like more healthcare. You may need, you know, it, it may increase if you have asthma. So you may need inhalers that may just increase other health conditions if you have them. There's cost to repair and recover from disasters or floods, um, extreme weather. Um, and there's cost to fuel right, due to geopolitical conflict um, that can happen from lack of resources like water. So what happens 
across the planet can affect us right here in Howard County. Um, how else people are affected? Um, gosh, personally, also, it, 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 most importantly, I think it affects our health, right? Burning fossil fuels creates air pollution, and that causes a myriad of, of health disorders like asthma, other respiratory disorders, stroke and heart attack. Um, heat waves, right, lead to heat stroke and sometimes death. Flooding can lead to exposure to mold or waterborne biological diseases. Smoke from wildfires contain very small particles that can be de detrimental to our lungs. And those of us in states that haven't really experienced wildfires but have experienced the smoke, like we did earlier this year from the Canadian wildfires, we really need to take seriously wearing masks and filtering our indoor air quality for our lung health. So the list, it goes on, you know, but I think we can agree our health is important to every single one of us. And if you can understand that climate change will detrimentally affect our health, that should be a good reason um, for you to take action on climate change. Well, cl climate change seems almost too big for most people to think about. I, can they make a difference? And, and what, what can they do? Yeah, I totally understand this. Um, <laughs> I live this day in and day out. And, but I want to, you know, emphatically say you absolutely can make a difference. One person can absolutely make a difference. Um, you know, some of my favorite quotes kind of to that point are one person can make a difference. Everyone can try. <laughs> um, I'm only one, I cannot do everything, but I can do something and I will not let what I cannot do interfere what I can do. Another quote I like is just that great things are done by a series of small things brought together. So if we kind of keep some of those, um, you know, quotes in mind, I hope that would help. Um, so uh, one thing you can do, really easy, quick internet search for reduce my carbon footprint or how can I help with climate change? You'll get a flurry of results. And I suggest clicking on ones that have like a .gov or .org or a .edu, you know, to start, right? Really reputable resources. Um, Howard County actually just released a really great website. I think I mentioned it earlier called climateforward.howardcountymd.gov. And they have a section called Call to Action which um, lists a bunch of things that you can do. Um, so that's really helpful. It's, there's, there's a lot out there. It, searching may take a while, but you'll, you'll find what works for you. There's so many things you can do and some are free and some are easy and some save you money. Actually, a lot of things can save you money um, and some might cost money up front, but save you money in the long run. So the list is kind of endless. I think, um, the easiest and free thing you can do is just vote for local, state, and national leaders that believe in science, like full stop. They just believe in science. Um, if your party's candidate says climate change isn't real, like, they're lying to you. Don't vote for them. They're, climate change is as real as gravity. I mean, let's, let's just say that. <laughs> okay. I think we can all agree it's important to vote. Yeah. Yeah, voting, we can change the systems and processes that are causing this rapidly accelerating climate change. We can push back against polluters like fossil fuel companies, and we can push for clean and renewable energy. So, um, okay, some other things you personally can do. Ah, nobody's going to like this, especially certain um, websites, but um, buy less stuff. <laughs> like, this will save you money. And it'll save you the headache of what to do with all that stuff when you're done using it. Just, just think before you buy. That's all. Just think the fact that everything we buy, especially if it's made from plastic, is made either from or with fossil fuels. So everything we buy, basically, that gets manufactured releases climate warming pollution. So just buy smart. That's all. <laughs> Uh, let's see. When it comes to food, reducing food waste is really helpful. Uh, again, this will save you money. So like an example is instead of buying four pounds of strawberries at your local warehouse, 
and then, you know, halfway through the week, they all get moldy and you have to throw them away, you know, buy half as much um, so that you actually, they actually all get eaten in theory. <laughs> but to explain why that's important is because when food waste goes into our landfill, it creates a gas called methane, which is a greenhouse gas that warms our planet nearly 90 times more than, than carbon dioxide. So um, if you can, if you're in the program area for Howard County's green bin compost program, get the bin, it's free. You can put out your food waste every week and they will compost it. So uh, that's really helpful. And composting doesn't release the kinds, the amounts of methane that, that landfills do. So big fan of, you know, food recycling and composting. Uh, let's see, staying on the topic of food, um, eat a plant-based diet. Uh, that's also gonna save you money and it's gonna be better for your health. Uh, it could even reduce medical costs down the road, saving you money again. Uh, it makes a big difference because, you know, that gas I mentioned before, methane, is released by, like, animals like cows, lamb, goat. Um, and often our land is destroyed to raise these animals. There's a lot of pollution to the air and the water locally. Um, and then just sort of globally, Amazon rainforest is like being slashed and burned to raise beef cows and to raise the, the food that they eat, corn, soybeans, and so forth. So we all know the value of the rainforest. Nobody wants that to be cut down, but even locally, just reducing your consumption of beef is really helpful. So, so I gotta ask, if we don't eat turkeys at Thanksgiving, what's gonna happen to all the turkeys? Well, yeah, okay. Um, I, you know, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the turkeys. You know, I don't. You, let's just eat turkey, okay? Let's eat turkey on Thanksgiving. But if it's not for you, tofurkey is an alternative. <laughs> also, I mean, all the side dishes at Thanksgiving are so delicious. I mean, I could make it just a plate full of side dishes. You know, <laughs> um, if you can get your turkey locally, uh, I know Howard County has at least one local turkey farm that's a great that's a great step to take yeah, yeah the show um, enough turkey farm yeah that's it that's it let's see if we move off of food to energy um you can reduce your energy which will save you money I, is there a theme here um so home heating is where most of your energy is used right so keep the house a bit cooler in winter wear a sweater keep it a bit warmer in summer summer you know and use fans to keep cool um, another thing is you can get your energy from a community solar program. That's uh, where they build a big solar array somewhere else in the community, but you, you're you essentially paying them to create that energy. So you're getting solar energy, which is better than just getting whatever your local utility gives you, which is typically mostly fossil fuel based. Um, if you own a home, when it comes time to replace your heat pump or your water heater, check the IRS for tax incentives and rebates. Um, if you want to get a new electric heat pump, I think you might be able to get up to like $8,000, right? It depends on salary and, and things like that. But you can get some pretty good money off of electrifying your home. So think about heat pump water heaters, uh, electric induction stoves, you can even upgrade your electrical panel. They'll give you money for that. Um, yeah, just just remember if you your house runs on natural gas, natural is kind of a funny word. I mean, sure, it comes out of the ground, so it's natural, but it's methane. And we already talked about methane a couple of times. It heats the earth 90 times more than carbon dioxide. And when it's in your home, it, it can release some toxins too that aren't really good for health. Studies have shown it increases your um, asthma in children. So we kind of want to make a move away from having gas in our homes and electrify instead. What else? Oh, um, transportation, vehicles. Uh, you know, if your car is reaching the end of its life and you can look at an electric vehicle or a hybrid, that's optimal. So many more models are coming out every year, just more and more. The prices are coming down. You know, you don't have to buy a luxury EV 
there are kind of standard basic normally priced EVs. They do exist. Um, and the federal government has incentives for that as well. Um, a pretty good chunk, actually, depending on the car, you could get as much as $7,500 off. The state has some incentives. Those come and go. Um, you can also buy a used EV. There's actually enough like turnover now. Um, you can get a used EV. And if, um, if you can use public transportation, I know that's not really a thing so much in Howard County, but we're trying. There are bus systems and, and they're always trying to expand and be better. But like if you want to go to DC instead of driving, just drive to one of the metro stations and then metro down to DC, for instance, you know. Wow. Okay. okay. Lots of things I'm going to tackle All right there. It's good ideas. So Kim, any final thoughts today? Well, first, Bob, I just want to thank you so much for for having this show and, and bringing conversations about climate change and sustainability to the public. I think that's that's just something we need to do. We all need to be talking about this. We don't have to be afraid of it. Um, the more we talk about it, the more change we can make. Um, and I've seen it time and time again in my public service that one person can make a difference. I've seen dozens of one person's making a difference. Um, so if you don't, you know, you're not sure what to do or how to get involved, just go to a meeting, even a virtual meeting, right? Just go and listen. You can stay off camera, right? And then maybe something might spark your interest. And then maybe you might want to go in person the next time. Um, and this could be any meetings, you know, environment meetings, your local village board meetings, an HOA meeting, anywhere you can start to learn about how your community works and then maybe help out somehow. Um, you'll find being involved in community is really fulfilling, really rewarding. You'll make new friends and you'll have an impact on your community. Um, also, you know, I can't be chair of everything forever, Bob. <laughs> we, we need a long and deep bench of people over to take, to, you know, to take over, over, over time. So just be that one person that makes a difference, right? Be the change you want to see, just to throw another oh, quote in there. That's that's wonderful, Kim. Well, we, we've reached the end of our show. Thank you, Kim, for joining me today. I'll be na back next month with another guest and sustainable topic. And in the meantime, if you have ideas or comments, you can connect with me at rmarietta at howardcc.edu. You can listen to this and all of our other episodes at Dragon Podcasts dot podbean dot com and you can also catch us on hcc tv and howard community college's youtube page now don't forget to share like comment and let others know to join us and help us take care of our world because every small step each of us can take can have a great impact when we act together thank you mm -hmm.